Flowering Plant, Wikipedia Audio Sweet Bay Basal Angiosperms Core Angiosperms Description The flowering plants, also known as angiosperms, angiospermy, or magnolia phyta, are the most diverse group of land plants, with 416 families, approximately 13,164 known genera and c 295,383 known species. Like gymnosperms, angiosperms are seed-producing plants. However, they are distinguished from gymnosperms by characteristics including flowers, endosperm within the seeds, and the production of fruits that contain the seeds. Etymologically, angiosperm means a plant that produces seeds within an enclosure, in other words, a fruiting plant. The term comes from the Greek words angion and sperma. The ancestors of flowering plants diverged from gymnosperms in the Triassic period, 245 to 202 million years ago, and the first flowering plants are known from 160 Maya. They diversified extensively during the Lower Cretaceous, became widespread by 120 Maya, and replaced conifers as the dominant trees from 100 to 60 Maya. Amborellides, Nymphiales, Ostrobaleales Angiosperms differ from other seed plants in several ways, described in the table below. These distinguishing characteristics taken together have made the angiosperms the most diverse and numerous land plants and the most commercially important group to humans. The amount and complexity of tissue formation in flowering plants exceeds that of gymnosperms. The vascular bundles of the stem are arranged such that the xylem and phloem form concentric rings. In the dicotyledons, the bundles in the very young stem are arranged in an open ring, separating a central pith from an outer cortex. In each bundle, separating the xylem and phloem, is a layer of meristem or active formative tissue known as cambium. By the formation of a layer of cambium between the bundles, a complete ring is formed, and a regular periodical increase in thickness results from the development of xylem on the inside and phloem on the outside. The soft phloem becomes crushed, but the hardwood persists and forms the bulk of the stem and branches of the woody perennial. Owing to differences in the character of the elements produced at the beginning and end of the season, the wood is marked out in transverse section into concentric rings, one for each season of growth, called annual rings. Among the monocotyledons, the bundles are more numerous in the young stem and are scattered through the ground tissue. They contain no cambium and once formed the stem increases in diameter only in exceptional cases. The characteristic feature of angiosperms is the flower. Flowers show remarkable variation in form and elaboration, and provide the most trustworthy external characteristics for establishing relationships among angiosperm species. The function of the flower is to ensure fertilization of the ovule and development of fruit containing seeds. The floral apparatus may arise terminally on a shoot or from the axil of a leaf. Occasionally, as in violets, a flower arises singly in the axil of an ordinary foliage leaf. More typically, the flower-bearing portion of the plant is sharply distinguished from the foliage-bearing or vegetative portion, and forms a more or less elaborate branch system called an inflorescence. Magnoliads, chloranthills, monocots, ceratophilides, eudicots. There are two kinds of reproductive cells produced by flowers. Microspores which will divide to become pollen grains, are the male cells and are born in the stamens. The female cells called megaspores, 
which will divide to become the egg cell, are contained in the ovule and enclosed in the carpal. The flower may consist only of these parts, as in willow, where each flower comprises only a few stamens or two carpels. Usually, other structures are present and serve to protect the sporophylls and to form an envelope attractive to pollinators. The individual members of these surrounding structures are known as sepals and petals. The outer series is usually green and leaf-like, and functions to protect the rest of the flower, especially the bud. The inner series is, in general, white or brightly colored, and is more delicate in structure. It functions to attract insect or bird pollinators. Attraction is affected by color, scent, and nectar, which may be secreted in some part of the flower. The characteristics that attract pollinators account for the popularity of flowers and flowering plants among humans. Dicotyledonii or Magnoliocyta, Monocotyledonii or Liliocyta. Angiosperm derived characteristics. While the majority of flowers are perfect or hermaphrodite, flowering plants have developed numerous morphological and physiological mechanisms to reduce or prevent self fertilization. Heteromorphic flowers have short carpels and long stamens or vice versa, so animal pollinators cannot easily transfer pollen to the pistil. Homomorphic flowers may employ a biochemical mechanism called self-incompatibility to discriminate between self and non-self pollen grains. In other species, the male and female parts are morphologically separated, developing on different flowers. The botanical term angiosperm from the ancient Greek alpha gamma gamma epsilon omicron nu, angian and sigma pyro mu alpha comma, was coined in the form angiospermy by Paul Hermann in 1690, as the name of one of his primary divisions of the plant kingdom. This included flowering plants possessing seeds enclosed in capsules, distinguished from his gymnospermy or flowering plants with achnial or schizocarpic fruits, the whole fruit or each of its pieces being here regarded as a seed and naked. The term and its antonym were maintained by Carl Linnaeus with the same sense, but with restricted application, in the names of the orders of his class Didynamia. Its use with any approach to its modern scope became possible only after 1827, when Robert Brown established the existence of truly naked ovules in the Cycadae and Coniferae, and applied to them the name gymnosperms. From that time onward, as long as these gymnosperms were, as was usual, reckoned as dicotyledonous flowering plants, the term angiosperm was used antithetically by botanical writers, with varying scope, as a group name for other dicotyledonous plants. In 1851, Hofmeister discovered the changes occurring in the embryo sac of flowering plants, and determined the correct relationships of these to the cryptogamia. This fixed the position of gymnosperms as a class distinct from dicotyledons, and the term angiosperm then gradually came to be accepted as the suitable designation for the whole of the flowering plants other than gymnosperms including the classes of dicotyledons and monocotyledons. This is the sense in which the term is used today. In most taxonomies, the flowering plants are treated as a coherent group. The most popular descriptive name has been angiospermy, with anthophyta a second choice. These names are not linked to any rank. The Wettstein system and the Engler system use the name angiospermy, at the assigned rank of subdivision. The Reveal system treated flowering plants as subdivision Magnolia phytina, but later split it to Magnoliocyta, Liliocyta, and Rosopsyta. 
The Taktajan system and Kronquist system treat this group at the rank of division, leading to the name Magnolia Phyta. The Dahlgren system and Thorn system treat this group at the rank of class, leading to the name Magnolia Cyta. The APG system of 1998, and the later 2003 and 2009 revisions, treat the flowering plants as a clade called angiosperms without a formal botanical name. However, a formal classification was published alongside the 2009 revision in which the flowering plants form the subclass Magnoliidae. The internal classification of this group has undergone considerable revision. The Cronquist system, proposed by Arthur Cronquist in 1968 and published in its full form in 1981, is still widely used but is no longer believed to accurately reflect phylogeny. A consensus about how the flowering plants should be arranged has recently begun to emerge through the work of the Angiosperm Phylogeny Group, which published an influential reclassification of the angiosperms in 1998. Updates incorporating more recent research were published as the APG2 system in 2003 the APG-3 system in 2009, and the APG-4 system in 2016. Traditionally, the flowering plants are divided into two groups, which in the Cronquist system are called Magnoliocyta and Liliocyta. Other descriptive names allowed by Article 16 of the ICBN include Dicotyledons or Dicotyledonii and Monocotyledons or Monocotyledonii, which have a long history of use. In English a member of either group may be called a Dicotyledon and Monocotyledon, or abbreviated, as Dicot and Monocot. These names derive from the observation that the dicots most often have two cotyledons, or embryonic leaves, within each seed. The monocots usually have only one, but the rule is not absolute either way. From a broad diagnostic point of view, the number of cotyledons is neither a particularly handy nor a reliable character. Vascular Anatomy Reproductive anatomy Recent studies, as by the APG, show that the monocots form a monophyletic group but that the dicots do not. Nevertheless, the majority of dicot species do form a monophyletic group, called the eudicots or tricolpates. Of the remaining dicot species, most belong to a third major clade known as the magnoliids containing about 9,000 species. The rest include a paraphyletic grouping of early branching taxa known collectively as the basal angiosperms, plus the families Ceratophilaceae and Chloranthaceae. Basal angiosperms, Omborella, a single species of shrub from New Caledonia, Nymphiales, about 80 species, water lilies, and Hydatolaceae, Austrobaleales, about 100 species of woody plants from various parts of the world. Taxonomy History of classification Modern classification Evolution Flowering plant diversity There are eight groups of living angiosperms. The exact relationship between these eight groups is not yet clear, although there is agreement that the first three groups to diverge from the ancestral angiosperm were Amborellales, Nymphiales, and Austrobaleales. The term basal angiosperms refers to these three groups. Among the remaining five groups, the relationship between the three broadest of these groups remains unclear. Zeng and colleagues describe four competing schemes. Of these, Eudicots and Monocots are the largest and most diversified, with 75% and 20% of angiosperm species, respectively. Some analyses make the Magnoliids the first to diverge, 
others the monocots. Ceratophyllum seems to group with the eudicots rather than with the monocots. The 2016 angiosperm phylogeny group revision retained the overall higher order relationship described in APG3. Omborella Reproduction Nymphiales Ostrobaleales Magnoliids Chloranthills Monocots Ceratophyllum Eudicots Fertilization and Embryogenesis 1. Phylogeny of the flowering plants, as of APG3 Omborella Fruit and Seed Nymphiales Ostrobaleales Meiosis Apomixis Uses Monocots Chloranthills Magnoliids Ceratophyllum Eudicots 2. Example of alternative phylogeny Amberellies Nymphiales Ostrobaleales Magnoliids Chloranthills Monocots Ceratophiles Eudicots 3. APG4 Amberellies Melikin, Bob Rove and Zait 7 1999 Nymphiales Salisbury X von Berchtold and Prissel 1820 Ostrobaleales Tactogen X Reveal 1992 Chloranthills Martinique 1835 Canal Lales Cronquist 1957 Pipe Rals von Berchtold and Prissel 1820 Magnoliles de Jesseru X von Berchtold and Prissel 1820 Laurels de Jesseru X von Berchtold and Prissel 1820 Acorales Link 1835 Alizamitals Brown X von Berchtold and Prissel 1820 Petrosavials Tactogen 1997 Dioscoreals Brown 1835 Pandanals Brown X von Berchtold and Prissel 1820 Liliales Perleb 1826 Asparagales Link 1829 Aricales Bromhead 1840 Poles Small 1903 Zingiber Ales Gris Ebic 1854 Cumlinales de Merbel X von Berchtold and Prissel 1820 Ceratophilates Link 1829 Ranunculates de Jesseru X von Berchtold and Prissel 1820 Proteals de Jesseru X von Berchtold and Prissel 1820 Trocodendrales Tactogen X Cronquist 1981 Buxales Tactogen X Reveal 1996 Gunnarals Tactogen X Reveal 1992 Dilniles de Condal X von Berchtold and Prissel 1820 Saxifragales von Berchtold and Prissel 1820 Vitalis de Jesseru X von Berchtold and Prissel 1820 Notes Zygophilates Link 1829 Celis Trals Link 1829 Oxala Dals von Berchtold and Prissel 1820. 
Mal Pigales de Jesseru X von Berchtold and Prisil 1820. Bibliography Articles, Books, and Chapters Fabales Bromhead 1838. Rosales von Berchtold and Prisil 1820. Q. Kerbet Ailes de Jesseru X. von Berchtold and Prisil 1820. Websites Fagales Angler 1892. Garen Ailes de Jesseru X. von Berchtold and Prisil 1820. Mert Ailes de Jesseru X. von Berchtold and Prisil 1820. Crossosomatal Tactogen X Reveal 1993 Picramniels Dowald 2001 Sapendales de Jesseru X von Berchtold and Prisil 1820 Huertiels Dowald 2001 Malvals de Jesseru X von Berchtold and Prisil 1820 Brass Eichel's Brumhead 1838 Berberidopsidals Dowald 2001 Santalales Brown X von Berchtold and Prisil 1820 Karyophiles Corn Ales Link 1829 Eric Ales von Berchtold and Prisil 1820 I. Cassinelli's Van Tigum 1900 Metni Usales Tactogen 1997 Gar Yales Martinique 1835 Gentian Ales de Jesseru X von Berchtold and Prisil 1820 Solan Ales de Jesseru X von Berchtold and Prisil 1820 Boraginales de Jesseru X von Berchtold and Prisil 1820. Valiales Dowald 2001. Lamiales Brumhead 1838. Aquafolials Senft 1856. Iscaliniles Martinique 1835. Astral's Link 1829 Brunniel's Du Mayer Tier 1829 Apiel's Nakai 1930 Paracryphiales Tactogen X Reveal 1992 D.I.P.'s Akals de Jesseru X von Berchtold and Prisil 1820 Fossilized spores suggest that higher plants have lived on land for at least 475 million years. Early land plants reproduced sexually with flagellated, swimming sperm, like the green algae from which they evolved. An adaptation to terrestrialization was the development of upright myosporangia for dispersal by spores to new habitats. This feature is lacking in the descendants of their nearest algal relatives, the Carophycene green algae. A later terrestrial adaptation took place with retention of the delicate, avascular sexual stage, the gametophyte, within the tissues of the vascular sporophyte. This occurred by spore germination within sporangia rather than spore release, as in non-seed plants. A current example of how this might have happened can be seen in the precocious spore germination in Selaginella, the spike moss. The result for the ancestors of angiosperms was enclosing them in a case, the seed. The first seed-bearing plants, like the ginkgo, and conifers, did not produce flowers. The pollen grains of ginkgo and cycads produce a pair of flagellated, mobile sperm cells that swim down the developing pollen tube to the female and her eggs. 
The apparently sudden appearance of nearly modern flowers in the fossil record initially posed such a problem for the theory of evolution that Charles Darwin called it an abominable mystery. However, the fossil record has considerably grown since the time of Darwin, and recently discovered angiosperm fossils such as Archifructus, along with further discoveries of fossil gymnosperms suggest how angiosperm characteristics may have been acquired in a series of steps. Several groups of extinct gymnosperms, in particular seed ferns, have been proposed as the ancestors of flowering plants, but there is no continuous fossil evidence showing exactly how flowers evolved. Some older fossils, such as the Upper Triassic San Migalaya, have been suggested. Based on current evidence, some propose that the ancestors of the angiosperms diverged from an unknown group of gymnosperms in the Triassic period. Fossil angiosperm-like pollen from the Middle Triassic suggests an older date for their origin. A close relationship between angiosperms and nitophytes, proposed on the basis of morphological evidence has more recently been disputed on the basis of molecular evidence that suggest nitophytes are instead more closely related to other gymnosperms. The evolution of seed plants and later angiosperms appears to be the result of two distinct rounds of whole genome duplication events. These occurred at 319 million years ago and 192 million years ago. Another possible whole genome duplication event at 160 million years ago perhaps created the ancestral line that led to all modern flowering plants. That event was studied by sequencing the genome of an ancient flowering plant, Omborella trichopoda, and directly addresses Darwin's abominable mystery. The earliest known macrofossil confidently identified as an angiosperm. Archifructus leoningensis, is dated to about 125 million years BP, whereas pollen considered to be of angiosperm origin takes the fossil record back to about 130 million years BP. However, one study has suggested that the early Middle Jurassic plant Schmeissneria, traditionally considered a type of ginkgo, may be the earliest known angiosperm or at least a close relative. In addition, circumstantial chemical evidence has been found for the existence of angiosperms as early as 250 million years ago. Oleanone, a secondary metabolite produced by many flowering plants, has been found in Permian deposits of that age together with fossils of gigantopterids. Gigantopterids are a group of extinct seed plants that share many morphological traits with flowering plants, although they are not known to have been flowering plants themselves. In 2013 flowers encased in amber were found and dated 100 million years before present. The amber had frozen the act of sexual reproduction in the process of taking place. Microscopic images showed tubes growing out of pollen and penetrating the flower stigma. The pollen was sticky, suggesting it was carried by insects. Recent DNA analysis based on molecular systematics showed that Omborella trichopoda, found on the Pacific island of New Caledonia, belongs to a sister group of the other flowering plants and morphological studies suggest that it has features that may have been characteristic of the earliest flowering plants. The orders Amborellales, Nymphiales, and Ostrobaleales diverged as separate lineages from the remaining angiosperm clade at a very early stage in flowering plant evolution. The Great Angiosperm Radiation, when a great diversity of angiosperms appears in the fossil record, occurred in the mid-Cretaceous. However, a study in 2007 estimated that the division of the five most recent of the eight main groups occurred around 140 million years ago. By the late Cretaceous, 
angiosperms appear to have dominated environments formerly occupied by ferns and cycadophytes, but large canopy-forming trees replaced conifers as the dominant trees only close to the end of the Cretaceous 66 million years ago or even later, at the beginning of the tertiary. The radiation of herbaceous angiosperms occurred much later. Yet, many fossil plants recognizable as belonging to modern families had already appeared by the late Cretaceous. It has been proposed that the swift rise of angiosperms to dominance was facilitated by a reduction in their genome size. During the early Cretaceous period, only angiosperms underwent rapid genome downsizing, while genome sizes of ferns and gymnosperms remained unchanged. Smaller genomes and smaller nuclei allow for faster rates of cell division and smaller cells. Thus, species with smaller genomes can pack more, smaller cells in particular veins and stomata into a given leaf volume. Genome downsizing therefore facilitated higher rates of leaf gas exchange and faster rates of growth. This would have countered some of the negative physiological effects of genome duplications, facilitated increased uptake of carbon dioxide despite concurrent declines in atmospheric CO2 concentrations, and allowed the flowering plants to outcompete other land plants. It is generally assumed that the function of flowers, from the start, was to involve mobile animals in their reproduction processes. That is, pollen can be scattered even if the flower is not brightly colored or oddly shaped in a way that attracts animals, however, by expending the energy required to create such traits, angiosperms can enlist the aid of animals and, thus, reproduce more efficiently. Island genetics provides one proposed explanation for the sudden, fully developed appearance of flowering plants. Island genetics is believed to be a common source of speciation in general, especially when it comes to radical adaptations that seem to have required inferior transitional forms. Flowering plants may have evolved in an isolated setting like an island or island chain, where the plants bearing them were able to develop a highly specialized relationship with some specific animal. Such a relationship, with a hypothetical wasp carrying pollen from one plant to another much the way fig wasps do today, could result in the development of a high degree of specialization in both the plant and their partners. Note that the wasp example is not incidental, bees, which, it is postulated, evolved specifically due to mutualistic plant relationships, are descended from wasps. Animals are also involved in the distribution of seeds. Fruit, which is formed by the enlargement of flower parts, is frequently a seed dispersal tool that attracts animals to eat or otherwise disturb it, incidentally scattering the seeds it contains. Although many such mutualistic relationships remain too fragile to survive competition and to spread widely, flowering proved to be an unusually effective means of reproduction, spreading to become the dominant form of land plant life. Flower ontogeny uses a combination of genes normally responsible for forming new shoots. The most primitive flowers probably had a variable number of flower parts, often separate from each other. The flowers tended to grow in a spiral pattern, to be bisexual, and to be dominated by the ovary. As flowers evolved, some variations developed parts fused together with a much more specific number and design, and with either specific sexes per flower or plant or at least ovary inferior. Flower evolution continues to the present day, modern flowers have been so profoundly influenced by humans that some of them cannot be pollinated in nature. Many modern domesticated flower species were formerly simple weeds, which sprouted only when the ground was disturbed. Some of them tended to grow with human crops, 
perhaps already having symbiotic companion plant relationships with them, and the prettiest did not get plucked because of their beauty, developing a dependence upon and special adaptation to human affection. A few paleontologists have also proposed that flowering plants, or angiosperms, might have evolved due to interactions with dinosaurs. One of the idea's strongest proponents is Robert T. Backer. He proposes that herbivorous dinosaurs, with their eating habits, provided a selective pressure on plants, for which adaptations either succeeded in deterring or coping with predation by herbivores. In August 2017, scientists presented a detailed description and 3D model image of what the first flower possibly looked like, and presented the hypothesis that it may have lived about 140 million years ago. A Bayesian analysis of 52 angiosperm taxa suggested that the crown group of angiosperms evolved between 178 million years ago and 198 million years ago. The number of species of flowering plants is estimated to be in the range of 250,000 to 400,000. This compares to around 12,000 species of moss or 11,000 species of pteridophytes, showing that the flowering plants are much more diverse. The number of families in APG was 462. In APG 2 it is not settled, at maximum it is 457, but within this number there are 55 optional segregates so that the minimum number of families in this system is 402. In APG3 there are 415 families. The diversity of flowering plants is not evenly distributed. Nearly all species belong to the Uticot, Monocot and Magnoliad clades. The remaining five clades contain a little over 250 species in total, i.e. less than 0.1% of flowering plant diversity, divided among nine families. The 43 most diverse of 443 families of flowering plants by species, in their APG circumscriptions, are Of these, the Orchidaceae, Poceae, Cyperaceae, Bromeliaceae, Aricaceae, and Iridaceae are monocot families, Piperaceae, Lauraceae, and Ananaceae are magnoliad dicots, the rest of the families are eudicots. Double fertilization refers to a process in which two sperm cells fertilize cells in the ovule. This process begins when a pollen grain adheres to the stigma of the pistil, germinates, and grows a long pollen tube. While this pollen tube is growing, a haploid generative cell travels down the tube behind the tube nucleus. The generative cell divides by mitosis to produce two haploid sperm cells. As the pollen tube grows, it makes its way from the stigma, down the style and into the ovary. Here the pollen tube reaches the micropyle of the ovule and digests its way into one of the synergids releasing its contents. The synergid that the cells were released into degenerates and one sperm makes its way to fertilize the egg cell, producing a diploid zygote. The second sperm cell fuses with both central cell nuclei, producing a triploid cell. As the zygote develops into an embryo, the triploid cell develops into the endosperm, which serves as the embryo's food supply. The ovary will now develop into a fruit and the ovule will develop into a seed. As the development of embryo and endosperm proceeds within the embryo sac, the sac wall enlarges and combines with the nucellus and the integument to form the seed coat. The ovary wall develops to form the fruit or pericarp, whose form is closely associated with type of seed dispersal system. Frequently, the influence of fertilization is felt beyond the ovary, and other parts of the flower take part in the formation of the fruit, 
e.g., the floral receptacle in the apple, strawberry, and others. The character of the seed coat bears a definite relation to that of the fruit. They protect the embryo and aid in dissemination, they may also directly promote germination. Among plants with indehiscent fruits, in general, the fruit provides protection for the embryo and secures dissemination. In this case, the seed coat is only slightly developed. If the fruit is dehiscent and the seed is exposed, in general, the seed coat is well developed, and must discharge the functions otherwise executed by the fruit. Flowering plants generate gametes using a specialized cell division called meiosis. Meiosis takes place in the ovule. A diploid cell in the ovule undergoes meiosis to produce four cells with haploid nuclei. One of these four cells then undergoes three successive mitotic divisions to produce an immature embryo sac with eight haploid nuclei. Next, these nuclei are segregated into separate cells by cytokinesis to producing three antipodal cells two synergid cells and an egg cell. Two polar nuclei are left in the central cell of the embryo sac. Pollen is also produced by meiosis in the male anther. During meiosis, a diploid microspore mother cell undergoes two successive meiotic divisions to produce four haploid cells. Each of these microspores, after further mitoses, becomes a pollen grain containing two haploid generative cells and a tube nucleus. When a pollen grain makes contact with the female stigma, the pollen grain forms a pollen tube that grows down the style into the ovary. In the act of fertilization, a male sperm nucleus fuses with the female egg nucleus to form a diploid zygote that can then develop into an embryo within the newly forming seed. Upon germination of the seed, a new plant can grow and mature. The adaptive function of meiosis is currently a matter of debate. A key event during meiosis in a diploid cell is the pairing of homologous chromosomes and homologous recombination between homologous chromosomes. This process promotes the production of increased genetic diversity among progeny and the recombinational repair of damages in the DNA to be passed on to progeny. To explain the adaptive function of meiosis in flowering plants, some authors emphasize diversity and others emphasize DNA repair. Apomixis is found naturally in about 2.2% of angiosperm genera one type of apomixis. Gametophytic apomixis found in a dandelion species involves formation of an unreduced embryo sac due to incomplete meiosis and development of an embryo from the unreduced egg inside the embryo sac, without fertilization. Agriculture is almost entirely dependent on angiosperms, which provide virtually all plant-based food, and also provide a significant amount of livestock feed. Of all the families of plants, the poceae, or grass family, is by far the most important, providing the bulk of all feedstocks. The fabaceae, or legume family, comes in second place. Also of high importance are the solanaceae, or nightshade family, the cucurbitaceae, or gourd family, the brassicaceae, or mustard plant family and the APAC, or parsley family. Many of our fruits come from the rutaceae, or rue family, and the rosaceae, or rose family. In some parts of the world, certain single species assume paramount importance because of their variety of uses, for example the coconut on Pacific atolls, and the olive in the Mediterranean region. Flowering plants also provide economic resources in the form of wood, paper, fiber, medicines, decorative and landscaping plants, and many other uses. The main area in which they are surpassed by other plants namely, coniferous trees, 
which are non-flowering is timber and paper production. 